Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today we are at a brand new place. Now I have been here before, however I have not filmed it. We are in Tip City, Ohio at Midwest Memories Antiques. Let's get inside, see what we can find. He's over there. <laughs> Let's do it, guys. I think I should probably ask to film before I get to step up. Let's do it. Okay, guys, here we are on the interior. And a special announcement. Richard is actually here with me doing the voiceover today. Do you know? Hello. <laughs> All righty, guys. So first up is this beautiful booth. Um, they've got a lot of really creative things here. You're seeing the diamond point there, the little baby. Oh, Richard's personal favorite is the doll man. <laughs> he said I should have gotten mm -hmm. two, but there was only one. So interesting little crafted items here. Really enjoy those. They're unique. Now, I will say that the, um, the, the bear with the doll face, that was actually sold separately than the cloche. The other items, of course, are sold as is again you're kind of seeing creepy babies there i love the overall aesthetic and vibe very shabby chic it's quite feminine um, but she does have some really interesting pieces here and i think we can all agree she really does have a flair for the decorating there and a little bit of the unusual now i saw these these were really cute these were just placed in the bottom or in the bottom in the bottle a little porcelain hot and cold Richard spotted something over here that caught your eye. I like this, this little basin here with the florals. You saw that? Yeah. I haven't seen dried flowers for a little while, so we, the wreath around the deer caught my eye. It was actually a very nice arrangement of dried flowers. Little celluloid. Well, not celluloid. These are 50s little prayer books here. You know, Tina has some dried pillows over there, right? No, I didn't see them. That's true. These are cute. They're priced. I don't know what this little tiny thing was. It was full. Now, these are our first get. They are a Japan piece. They are from a company called, it's literally called Unani Rice Product. I thought they were quite elegant. They were only $5 each. Uh, again, ceramic. The stoppers are intact. I think they make a beautiful decor piece, so we definitely pick those up. Now, the same vendor had these little, it was a Catholic devotional. It's this miniature little prayer book here from 1929. And then she kind of put tucked that inside this old little jewelry box here, or there was a rosary box. And then put the little um, China head doll on there with a cute little uh, Mary medallion on there and $18. I wanted to pick it up because it's just unusual. You saw the wildflower books here. Yeah, this was apparently part of a set of books on flowers, and they had the different types. I can't remember. It's the woodland flowers that you found. Mm -hmm. I had one of these before. They did well. I like them because it, it's just unusual subject matter. We were checking for the price here. It's on the little ribbon tucked away back here in the back, and it is, do you remember? Mm-mm. $14. I don't think that's the worst for a collector, but as a reseller, I would have wanted to have gotten it for less. And here was another one. This is the Wildflowers book. I love how uh, colorful they are. And it is nice if you like flowers to read up on them. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know how many were in the full set. I bet quite a few. We should probably look that up, maybe. This was really interesting. It was a little Valentine's Day box, and it was musical. Um, the overall displayability I thought was great. The cardboard was in really good condition. You would wind it up, and you you could open it, and the music would start playing. But unfortunately, yeah, it just didn't it didn't work. These are really pretty. They look to be obviously like a a twenty two karat gold, really shiny and pretty. And we are had look at that swan. It's like get off of me. Cute little nursery rhyme pages here. Antique calendars. I love seeing those. They have great graphics. But we are headed down into another part of the mall here. Gonna check it out. Like I said, we've been here once before. We found some great Victorian ornaments. 
uh, this vendor that we are at right now. She had a tree set up. Her prices were fantastic. So we definitely wanted to check out more. Obviously, she's got a variety of different jewelry caskets here. The very tiny, uh, to some medium sized ones here. And how much does it say it is? 30. 30. Mm. I like it because it's round. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a more contemporary one, though I did love all of the detail work to it. Um, and at only $8, I thought that it was a good get. It, it's anywhere from like, honestly, it could be 50s all the way up through the 80s. I don't know for sure, but again, I'm buying it simply based on the aesthetic value of it versus like any antique history that may come along with it. I do have a little bit of a larger one here. I would really say this is about a medium sized one. Price, again, it's very fair for a collector, but just not necessarily where I need it to be for resale. So cute little tiny one. I only have one tiny one. Do you even have any of these jewelry caskets? I don't have any myself. Mm -hmm. There are a few over at the parents, I'm sure. I'm surprised. I like the... Yeah. They have a good I've, aesthetic to them. I've had them in the past, but I just don't have a lot of use for them. They're just pretty. Well, that's all the use that they mm -hmm. need in life. Is right? To be, I mean... <laughs> I'm low on counter space. There are some things that exist mm -hmm. just to be beautiful, you know? Mm -hmm. Some great antique Valentines here. You know, I'm... It'll take a special card for me to really want to get an individual card, especially priced at where these are priced at. Um, that's not to say that I won't, because we do find some here in just a second, but it's going to have that unusual subject matter. I like bright, vibrant colors. Um, oh, this one here, this is like a, a um, Greek myth here, kind of done in the Circe and, and Cupid style. I really liked it. Um, He's more of a butterfly, I will say, than a Cupid, but I think that's what it was based off of. And speaking about bright and vibrant colors, I mean, that one was just, the colors just jump right out at you. Got a little photography one. I don't, that's just. Mm, yeah, it seemed a little indecent. <laughs> <laughs> Those Victorians sure knew mm -hmm. how to have a good time. That wasn't subtle. <laughs> I mean, life is too short. You know? Right? Go for it. <laughs> Do you imagine 1900s and that came through the mail? We're looking at some Victorian jewelry here. Looks to be like a little, uh, could be like a sash uh, clip to it. I mean, she's priced at retail. The cute little bisque baby here with the pumpkin. That was $65. I'm curious to know if there was a specific manufacturer. She was just basing it off of overall aesthetic or looks. And we're going to wrap it up here in this vendor's booth. So I'm pleased. They seem to have like a flair for like the smalls. Again, uh, finding a bunch of Victorian ornaments in there and just great antique postcards. And so we've got some great hats here. I did try this on it. Did I try that on? You sure did. It didn't fit though, did it? Barely. Well, it was more about the lace that was on the top. We couldn't quite decide if it was a men's or a woman's. Uh -huh. <laughs> that thing was snug. I do remember getting it on, but it was a snug fit. That's for sure. And of course we've got our little composition Pinocchio and our little cast iron Popeye back there in the back. Finding some more antique postcards here. I love the heavy embossing on this one, uh, but the colors just didn't really do it for me. Kind of rifling through them quickly. We were here for quite some time. Oh, a leather one here. This one's nice. The fact that it's not all dried out. Small miracle. I mean, we really captured a lot here on film today, guys. Little Migos, the Star Trek guys back there. The Little. taxidermied animals. Those are hideous. <laughs> you really feel <laughs> I like those kinds of things, but sometimes the talent isn't quite there to... Oh, those were a little... Ratty-looking. Yeah. yeah. 
So some interesting ones over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> some interesting little pharmaceutical bottles here. Um, I like the ones that say poison on it, right? Tobacco dust. I wonder why that's I have no idea what they used it for. To kill something. This has got a great graphic on it. These two little hands here. That's usually what's gonna make you know any bottle. Uh, desirable obviously if the labels on there and of course the graphic or what the actual bottle was used for that was interesting to see the frog in the stand like that mm -hmm. we've got some great viking pieces here the candlesticks were a little pricey we do have our egret here this one's a little bit harder of a piece to find uh, in the amberina well in any color this one in particular of course is in the amberina so those are pretty to see, and you definitely want to be gentle with that one. That neck is so fragile. Mm, but I don't really spawn a whole lot of anything else. Pretty little blue compote there, candy dish, I should say. Oop. Moving on. Oh, there's a little trunk, but that one is a bow top, or what is it? A round top? Yeah. We don't do the round tops because you can't stack them. That's right. Okay. <laughs> That's what Richard is quite literally saying right now. This is cute, this little assemblage. Don't know if that was there the last time or not. I mean, this antique mall really does run the gamut from contemporary up through or back to antiques this is a special piece this is a fenton this is plum glass it's a very hard to get color it is priced at 69 dollars, and you know i kind of hemmed and hauled on it it is a little picture which uh, the subject matter isn't the best however if you turn it around um you don't see the handle so it very much displays this is a little bud base I love the opalescent effect creating the moonstone there and the hobnails. There's no chips. There's no cracks. Um, again, it's a little bit spendier than what I would typically want to spend on it. But it's one of those items where you kind of want to bring it to a sale or have it available to sell as a reseller because there's a little bit of prestige uh, in having something like this. Again, something very difficult, the colorway to find. So it wasn't the most dynamic of subject matters, but this was based or purchased i should say based solely off of the actual color and look at that opalescent on the interior so we definitely picked this one up too our little chintz pattern here again popular in the 1800s though it did read a little new to me i still like the pattern in doses and yes it does turn out to be a, a modern piece and below the plum and below the little chintz pattern i did see this what looked to be um, little German uh, vase here. She's in overall really good condition. It's very much done in a royal ducks style, uh, specifically the the painting of the eyes. It's very lightly done. It's not uh, meant to to be overly realistic. Kind of really let your imagination play with the piece there. Though I will say that the light washing in her robes, I think that that's done very well too. Eight dollars, not not um, not a terrible price. If I would have purchased it, it would have been something to keep. So I said no because again, space is limited. Twenty dollars. You said this piece was new, though. You thought, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a little dresser mirror. I mean, at twenty dollars, though, even if it's new, it's it certainly it's cheap. But I yeah, it was a new piece. I'm kind of disappointed that I set this vanity set back for $18. I was editing this earlier and I was like, why did you set that back? Of course, we've got a little lot of little bisque babies, just none that were overly exciting. We've got a little icon here. I thought initially it might have been an, an Italian souvenir piece, a vintage Italian souvenir piece, but it is, again, a modern piece. I love these little creamers here, these little Austrian and Czechoslovakian creamers. A lot of them would be blanks and then hand painted by the ladies of the time. I like the lines on this little personal sugar dish here. It's cute. 
Um, again, it's not like it's super valuable or anything like that, but I love the look of it. Now we do have our Aurora Borealis egg that very much looks, it looks like a nipple. Mm. It, <laughs> That's going back. <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine why. Oh, goodness. We've got like a little Russian hand painted egg. This one was actually kind of cute with her little strawberry babushka on. We, of course, do have. It was upside down. I was wondering why I couldn't read it. <laughs> it's that foreign language. What? I, that's what I thought it was. I was like, well, it's foreign. I can't. Oh, this little guy here. Um, this one's a made in Japan piece. I do have a made in occupied Japan uh, frog who is playing. He's standing. So I got him to go along with them. And then Richard found the left and bunnies. I like these little rabbits. You said you did have some? Mm-hmm. Yep. I love these go great in a Victorian decor because you know they loved especially spring, but they loved mm -hmm. their bunnies and their chicks. Ooh, this was a good find. Here, this is me opening the fan backwards, but I'll get it figured out here in a moment. <laughs> but it, it's a the string goes to the back side, the back of the front. Side. Okay. It's a beautiful example. Again, something that's really unusual here. We'll show it to you. There you go. Mm -hmm. What are those bleeding hearts, I think? I love it. We definitely picked it up. It's, again, something that's unusual. Um, and it's in great condition. So these little bisque figurines, I thought they were going to be creepier, but it's just a, a bride and a groom, which could be creepy for some people. Talking about creepy, we found a dolly here. She's not, she's a bit of a normie. Um, flipped her over. Uh, she, honestly, her retail is, for some bisque dolls don't go, for all that much she was about a 65 to 75 dollar doll so she was at 65 so we left her there these cute little bugs here all of these little tiny this one was really cute i think we wouldn't get the skunk Remember the little mexican turtle here oh no that's a fish not bad prices but for the set of the three anthropomorphic bugs those were 12 dollars. so we definitely go ahead and pick those up the little dragon was adorable I like the little tchotchkes. Yep. So there go our bugs. Now he doesn't necessarily go with them. The two in the back are salt and pepper shakers, but I mean, three for 12 bucks. Yeah. We can kind of have a whole little family here. Overall, really good condition. So I was pleased to get those. Oh, you found this bank. The baby's nest egg. Mm -hmm. Little 50s acrylic bank. Very retro color. Mm -hmm. I do like that color. The blue art glass fish here. Ooh, and then I spot another postcard. This postcard is a keep. Look at her. She's absolutely beautiful. Again, talking about unusual subject matter at $4, I'm, I'm not mad at it. There is some script on it. That's okay. So at 4 bucks, there's no postmark on it. I don't know if they ever sent it, though. They put a stamp on it, but there's no, you see? Mm -hmm. The stamp's there, but I don't see a postmark. I don't see a postmark. Maybe it was in there. Oh, Richard found a giant sponge. Mm -hmm. Back to the postcard. <laughs> Back to the postcard. <laughs> We're about to head downstairs. There's a small room of... Architectural salvage. Yeah. They have some other stuff. Other Records, stuff, yes. it. I saw that wall sconce. That one was cool, and the and the like the bronze finish or the gilded finish. And something caught your eye over here. It was that this wall. light fixture. Mm -hmm. It's a wall sconce light fixture. Was that rewired? Was... Oh yeah, there it is. The threads. Yeah, it's not complete. It would take some work to put it back together, but it was a very nice piece. What held you back from it? Nowhere to put it. Nowhere to put it. Okay. Well, that's a good reason not to buy it. Mm -hmm. You were giving it some serious consideration. And some beautiful hardware. Mm -hmm. So you would run one wire and split it three ways to get it to work? Is that yeah. Part? Okay. From the back, you'd have three wires that went up through the arms. Fairly easy to fish into. 
when they would have had candles on top of each mm. tier. It was unusual that they were tiered. Oh, really? Like that. They're normally just straight across horizontally, oh, okay. so the stair step down was a little bit different. Would have been more interesting, I think. Oh, so you think maybe on stair steps, mm. and they would be graduated well, to go up, up or down with the stairs? Could have been. Um, it's just unusual to see the light itself uh, tiered like that. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a little bit of the gilding it is still left on it, though, too. Talking about, you know, maybe kind of cleaning it up, obviously, and maybe bringing out a little bit more of the gilding, not too it much. It is a pot metal piece. Yeah. So you have to be careful with those. Why? If they break, you can't fix it. Oh. You can't solder pot metal. Oh, you can't? Mm -mm. I've never found anyone that could. Oh. Cute little lock sets. Those very are cute. Victorian. Yeah. And so very tiny. They were very tiny. Would these be for like cabinets? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah, I've never actually seen the little. I like this That's one. A window latch. Is it? Uh -huh. Oh, I didn't even realize that. It's just one of those things. They look cool. Yes, yeah, the staircase um, banister supports. We're going to showcase those. I think you, you got down a couple of them, one or two. What are these, like the long? Oh, there, there you go. Uh -huh. yeah. So these would be attached these are to the wall? beautiful Victorian, yeah. Attached to the wall, and then the uh, wooden rail would sit on top of it. So this would be on the, this would be an interior banister? Yes. Okay. And these are hard to get? When they're that ornate, so, they're a lot harder to find. Now, they were... The set I was holding only had two, so it wouldn't go very far. But this other set, okay. you can see some more. Uh, they had a few different sets, and some were larger. So those would be more functional. Functional as in? You could actually use them again. Oh, okay. Unless you have a very short handrail, two won't go very far. Oh, oh, oh okay, I gotcha. So if you just have three or four steps, you might get away with it. Okay. So we are headed down into the basement. Mm -hmm. Didn't really spot a whole lot at first. Um, again, it's a variety of items. Something that did catch my eye, of course, at first is that bright blue cookie jar back there. I mean, how could I not go right to him? It's, it's Cookie Monster. He's adorable. It's painted really well. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Hmm. A lot of contemporary, a lot of new items in here. There is some vintage items. I didn't really see a whole lot of antique items, at least on this particular side. Oh, we did find a, a vintage eight ball here. Mm -hmm. Everybody ask your question. There's your answer. You have, I think, a couple more. Op you have one or two more opportunity. Oh, one more opportunity. There's your answer. This one did look like a vintage eight ball, though. Oh, no, you get a third. Ask your third question, guys. It's your final one. Everybody has a question. Here's your answer. <laughs> this is a cute little service set. You think like a tea? I had no idea what that would be for. It has the great pattern on it. I don't know if that was supposed to symbolize something or not. The grapes. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but they sure did like to use it back in the day. 35 for that whole set. That's a good price, though. Mm -hmm. They can make a beautiful display piece. Oh, little yo-yo clown dolls. Love these. Richard loved them, too. I can't believe you didn't take that home. <laughs> did I make a cute look? Nora Wells doll. Now, this is not... I don't believe this is a genuine one. This is kind of like a knockoff version uh, the other ones had the sculpted cloth faces. I actually had one and sold one before, but he was cute. Like to see him, little doll chest there. I'm still on the hunt for the right one. Or a child's. That's fine too. This one had a little bit more of the vintage and the antiques in it, though. Ooh, now this made going down in the basement worth it. This is Sabino glass. It's French opalescent. Uh, you'll know it because they are, of course, etched. 
This is, I can't remember, is this Mary or is it Jesus? This was Mary. Mary, yeah, I see her her robe there. Um, now, this one is marked, it was marked Paris. Um, so you would have two different uh, etchings, one being Paris, the other being France. Uh, those that were etched Paris were meant to be sold uh, in France. Those that were etched France were meant to be sold in the international market. Um, an interesting thing about the Sabino is that they are still in production. The molds were legally purchased and it's now uh, called Sabino crystal glass. And of all places, it is made and manufactured out of Texas. Um, this was an older piece. So I was definitely pleased to get this one. They no longer include the Paris or France on there. So a little spendy, but definitely worth it. So definitely pleased to pick that one up. This little guy here, my goodness. I think, okay, so we did, we have came, come back upstairs. Um, we're in like the second half of the second room, kind of looping around here. Didn't spot a whole lot in there, but this vendor is filled. They were the Scotty Dog lovers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a few. I love this boot straight. It had a Scotty on top of it, but... No room. Hmm. Yeah, nowhere to put him. <laughs> but different kind of a boot scraper. So. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, from cast iron boot scrapers to covered dishes there and that iridescence, bra brass figure. Well, there probably were brass figurines, book ceramic ends. figurines, bookends. If it had a Scotty dog on it, this vendor was all about it. Oh, I love this little plaster. Look at that. That's an unusual uh, stance, especially um, for a tin type like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to pray that child is alive because I don't know how they would have done was. that. Other. <laughs> Jews. Yeah, I liked it till you said that. Well, I mean, you had to know about hanging pictures of dead hold a okay. pose you had to mm -hmm. hold a pose for like at least a minute mm -hmm. yeah, i believe that's true. and that child sitting on that chair portraits of children would have been blurry if they were alive mm -hmm. probably yeah they couldn't sit still long enough here's another casket speaking this of, had the, the uh -huh. they had the pine cones yeah yeah this <laughs> it went from deceased children to caskets so <laughs> just bright and uplifting <laughs> video here today you guys glad nothing fell out right you know, and I saw that, though, too. I feel like I should have got that pine cone jewelry casket. Mm. That was different to have it, that kind of content you know, on it. This is some older Weller here. Very lightly stamped. And they definitely knew what they had. $95. So we set that one back. Then I saw these beautiful little cut glass, the vanity um, canister on it, which would check the price. I specifically remember this. It was $75. So we just, yeah. Quickly went back. Yeah. You can stay there, and um, that's about it there. Ooh, I did see these, these Bethany Lowe. Um, they're, you know, vintage-inspired here, these paper mache. They're priced at $125. I mean, they're quite impactful. They make a huge statement, and I absolutely love the little giraffe down here. The postcard is glued into the mouth. Um, I, you know, again, I'm not going to turn my nose up at some of the contemporary pieces, and those Bethany Lowe pieces, are those are pretty gosh darn amazing. This set was super special. Mm -hmm. Great flower set. Mm -hmm. $75 for everything. I think that's a good deal. It seems that the only piece that would have been mix it, mixing, missing is the top of the little shaker over here, the tall piece that you're seeing in the back left. This one here, yeah. But otherwise, I mean, you could probably it's really get it. pretty in a full set. Yeah. You can get a contemporary one and put it on there. And, you know, I would probably, even if it had the original one and you wanted to use it, I probably would replace it. Oh, this Norwalk vase. Norwalk was an Ohio, it was another Ohio pottery company. And they did a lot of like the victory sculpts of the wings, the trophy cups. Um, and this one was only $5. So I definitely picked it up. I love the unusual subject matter of this one. I've not seen this particular sculpt before. But again, you can see those victory wings there uh, very lightly on the side. Five bucks, I think that was a great get. Very organic in the feel. 
Oh gosh, do you remember what's coming up here? No. The book. <laughs> we do find some more things before we get to the book. Now you did find this great like little nymph art deco -y. I would say she's an antique piece of amethyst glass with that uh, hand painting on there. What'd you get there, sir? Oh. They were just all black pieces of glassware. It was kind of interesting to see. You know, most of those are purple, with... right? Oh, no, that looked black. You hold it up into the light and you'll you can see, see a little it. bit of it. Yeah. yeah, those were nice little candlesticks. Ooh, Cambridge glass, beautiful uh, uranium glass, super underrated. The gold transferware on the top here was in excellent condition. It was not uh, worn off in any way. Oh gosh, and then Richard found the green Fenton. Uh, again, this is a uranium piece. This piece was only $9.50. This vendor had some amazing pieces, really undervalued. Um, that was an amazing get, and the glow mm -hmm. on that piece is phenomenal. You um, said that was a squashed vase. Fan base. <laughs> Squatty vase. <laughs> and the Cambridge at only $10. So those were he two huge scores today. And that plum, too, mm -hmm. of course. We found some really good glass mm -hmm. today. Oh, I know the book. This book? No, it's sitting in the uh, shelf. Uh-oh, he remembers. It's coming up. <laughs> this is, it was traumatizing. This is, but it, it was definitely, yeah. Um, so the little kids' books here. Didn't find anything too overly exciting. Mm, this first reader kind of caught my attention because I like the graphic on the front of it. The little animals there. That's a fun little image. Ooh. Look at that separation on that bad boy. Yeah. It's got like those monotones, the oranges and the blue. So I left that one behind. Now this one again, it was that unusual, that creature there on the front. This one was $2. Some of the pages were loose. However, I really like that 1930s, that the, the red, white, and blues to it. I don't know. The colors were so great and saturated. I think the illustrations were just really unusual. Um, so I know that the pages were loose, but I wanted to rescue it and uh, definitely glad to get this one. What are we at? I couldn't see it. 19, I think 32 is what it said. Look at the elephant. So again, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get that one. This is a pretty compo, or what was I calling it? A, a trifle? Yes. What was That's what it is. You were calling it a trifle, dude. What was it? No, I was you calling call it, it treacle. Tri That's right. I just said it was treacle. <laughs> <laughs> Close. I'm like, it's treacle. Oh, so you got a little uh, collection of books here. I mean, the subject matter wasn't really thrilling me so I like this little pewter creamer here it's a little beat up but I liked it it had some personality to it we didn't get it though Ooh, look at this beautiful cross stitch this card table here it's on a gorgeous linen there's no condition issues to it I couldn't see the price at first I was very curious uh, the work on it was done very well so uh, I wanted to gently get it out still searching for that price tag um, I don't find it until we unfold it but um, you could just tell that somebody really took their time with it in some interesting colors. It's very feminine, uh, very specific, but I know a lot of people out there, they really do value the time and the effort that's spent on these. Here it is unfolded. The price was pinned there in the middle, and at only $5, I think that, that was an amazing steal. Um, it certainly took somebody more than five minutes to make it. Uh, Richard found the gorgeous Viking. This is the epic drape in their parsimon. Compo. I'm not the biggest compote fan. I think there are a lot of compotes out there. However, finding the epic drape Viking, that's a pretty amazing score. So we most certainly pick this one up today. Uh, talking about compote. Oh, look at this. I don't. The Lucite grapes. Not mm -hmm. the biggest fan of the, that color combination. Again, speaking of, there's a lot of compotes out there. Here's another compote. Checking out the little jewelry there. Nothing really caught my eye. Ooh, we got a little uh, 
that says Viking candy dish back there. Good in amber. Amber can be a tough sell unless it's a really unusual sculpt. Oh, look it. Mm -hmm. Who's it by? This is the thumbprint. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, but it's it's it, you see it a lot. Now this piece is interesting. Do you remember what this was in the style of? The manufacturer of this one? No, the Empoli. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So this was really cool. I love the stem on this one and that amber. And the rippling at the top is very much a hallmark of Empoli glass. Originally, it was just priced not where we needed it to be for resale, but it was a really good get for a collector. I will say that. Interesting little book here. Ooh, and then we found some amethyst Viking glass in the honeycomb pattern here. I did not notice this when I got it. There was a chip on the lid. Um, that was sad. It was only $19. It still sold and sold well. So, you know, there was money on it. Um, we have another lidded candy dish here. Richard was like, I was like, it's a candy dish. And he was like, but there's no lid lip on it. And see kind of how it like inserts down in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just saw the amber one. Do you remember me saying the Viking amber one? Yes. It's the same. Yep. Yeah. This was cool. This little cigarette tray in that pagoda style. I really like the lines on that one, um, but $25, I just couldn't want to get in it. Uh-oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So we were in this booth. Yes. And checking out some things. Right. Mm -hmm. But happened to find a book sitting down on the bottom of the bookcase here. It's yeah. Funny. And you'll notice though too on the back of the bookshelves here, you guys, you'll notice that there are some pages. Oh, here's the book. Here's the heart. So we move the heart. Here comes the book. Look at that beautiful. Richard loves a, re a leather bound mm -hmm. a book. This has her name on the front. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hand it off. We're going to check it out. See some of the pages back <laughs> there <laughs> behind the shelves. It's yes. a music book. Mm -hmm. Now, there does appear that they inserted additional sheet music in there, but the vast majority of the book is original to the binding. What was she doing with it? She was taking all these pages out to make crafts. And you can see on the shelves, she was tacking them to the back of the shelf just to add to the, the, the display. Yeah. yeah, just to the aesthetic. But it was such an unusual book to find. It was very early and you can see the the pictures inside were just incredible of course there's no price so we took this up to the counter to see if we could get a price and she declined to sell she said it was not for sale because she wanted to tear it up and use it for her crafts just to interject you're seeing more of the pages behind her. i did spot the cupy but you can see the pages there you're seeing the sheet music some of the illustrations um, I mean, it that's heartbreaking to see the book being took taken apart for that specific reason. Again, here's another illustration. I thought this bell chair was really cute, but guess what? This item was also not for sale. There was something else I was interested in the booth that was marked not for sale. Um, you know, I think it's one of those situations where it's, you know, to each their own. I guess once you own something, it's entirely up to you what you choose to do with it. Um, but th there you see the Popsy Wopsy. Mm -hmm. Those beautiful, the cottage by the sea. I mean, it's beautiful and it's a shame that it's being taken apart for, I, I don't know. I just. You could have had the same effect with newer music. Or if you photocopy it. Was, yes. If you photocopy. Oh, look. And then there's a Goodwill sticker on the back. <laughs> The faux pas, mm -hmm. the faux pas. I don't know. It's just, um, it's unfortunate. It, it really truly is unfortunate because you had somebody that was interested in preserving it. And, uh, you know, that's how we all get the beautiful things that we get. Well, and the irony is I would have paid her more for that book than she could probably ever get out of 
the crafts, mm -hmm. you know, using it for the back like that. Mm -hmm. So, but she didn't even want to entertain, entertain a hot dog. So, mm -hmm. I thought that was a beautiful piece there. Do you, the green empoli. Uh -huh. Yeah. Richard has a, quite a few of the empoli pieces in the peacock. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful saturated jewel tone. I have taken a liking to that peacock color. It is a well. It goes great with dark woods, brasses. Mm -hmm. A little bit of the toys here. We'll talk about the book more at the conclusion of the video. This is really interesting. This cake plate here. It's. I don't know. I. I want. I don't know how I feel about this because that medallion. What if, how would you cut your cake on that? You couldn't though, you know? So maybe it was just a display piece. I don't, I don't understand it. Oh, there's a little mannequin. We were looking for mannequins. A little cloth doll here, a little China head doll. I think she's more of um, a contemporary reproduction than she is a genuine. So we are up towards the front of the mall here. This is really cute. I like that little game. A little teacup is what it is, not necessarily a game. You always got to check out the Bisque Babies. You never know when you'll find a little weirdo. Now, this guy was unusual, but he wasn't weird. It was very like Fred from Scooby-Doo. That's what he looks like. Doesn't it? Uh-huh. But Fred was too normal, so he had to stay in the dish. Again, some beautiful pulled togethers here. Oh, do you remember this piece? It oh, the chocolate, chocolate cup. Yeah. yeah. That was very unusual. I love the little bunny on it. Mm. But remember, like the but vendor they, said. Yeah, the vendor said the stickers were new. Which you, I would never, I appreciate them putting that on there because I would not have thought that. I really truly wouldn't. It was done know. really well. Yeah. Especially the bunny because it has like wear to it. Mm -hmm. I would have I would have never known. Oh, see, here's what they're doing. Now these look like they're contemporary yeah, or these are newer pieces for right. sure. And that well, was like the, the sheet idea. music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I see what they're going for and I get it, but they were using things that were easily replaceable, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, these little paper dolls here. They're, I think they're called Mopsies, if I'm remembering correctly. Don't quote me on that. But they cut them out here. and they I mean, they're framed, but at least they're kept together. Oh, here you found that. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little leather mm -hmm. case. Looked like it was meant to hold test tubes. I found some Flemish boxing here, the, the pyrography. There we go. There it is. You got that for five? I believe so. And if you guys didn't see it in the last video that was posted, Richard actually got that and sold it. Mm hmm. Yep. Took it down and put it on consignment. Sure did. Ooh, the composition book for only $3. This is really cool. It was in 1930s uh, clippings. So whomever owned it went through and took out clippings for astrological signs and did it for every single month. I just thought it was really unusual, so I was excited to get that piece. I think, again, something that's strange and unusual. That's really what I keep my eye out for. So a little bit of the shabby chic here, shall we say. We're headed into the back here. Uh, a mix of true vintage, a lot of the contemporary stuff here, the early Americana, the primitive, the rustic kind of look. And then you turn over here to the right, and it's a full on like mid century. We've got glass, we've got furniture. Um, this is really interesting. I love this black lava glaze here. Again, the lines on it, it's kind of like Asian inspired, I think. Little blue glass heart here. I don't know. It was cute. It wasn't, it was, did you see how much it was? $48. $48 right. <laughs> Some great fiberglass lampshades there. I mean, this stuff is fun to see. And, and, you know, that's really what it is about, especially for the videos, is getting out and about and seeing some different unusual things. We've got a whole Lucite uh, collection here in the green. It's priced at $100. 
I'm not feeling it at that price. You found a gorgeous little trinket box here with a moonstone effect. I actually own this piece. This one is missing its lid. This was a really cool set. Did you see this? Mm -mm. Look at that. I love that. That's a yeah, great look. It is. I mean, it's very masculine. It, it mm -hmm. is. Um, but I just, it was really strange and unusual. Don't know the manufacturer on that one. I can't read that price tag. <laughs> it's so faded. A little bit of the more Ampoli here. I love this one. I've actually never seen this swirl optic on it. It was priced at only $12. I love the color. It's great for your winter decor. It is great for the 4th of July for your patriotic. Um, and it's an unconventional kind of hit of color for your Christmas too. We've got some more Lucite candles here. Um, those were fun to see. The Costa Boda, the Blanco candlesticks here. That pebble glass effect. Candlesticks are at $28. If they were a different color, I would have gotten them, but the clear with the gold uh, foil wasn't overly dynamic. Oh my gosh, don't get your hopes up now, y'all. You saw the prices. Um, th these are priced at retail. Now, I will say these Viking um, ones here, pardon me, these are not Viking. These are Ellie Smith. Um, I really like them. I think the colors are really pretty, but mm, 85 is pushing it. There's that peacock. Mm -hmm. Is it 225? I believe so. That's not hateful. I love the fold on the swing on this one. I mean, that's, it's, I think it was like 19 and a half is mm -hmm. what they had on it. Yeah. We have a taller pedestal, the Amberina here. These are beautiful to see. And I will say 225 for that, if it's 19 and a half, that is part of the, um, ew, it's the smoothie, the Viking smoothie. It, it's a really fair price, especially in today's market. It's just not where I need it to be for resale. I was really contemplating these. These do not glow. It's just an absolutely gorgeous hue of green, though. Very um, kind of like a... Um, you just found that they're matched, too. Yeah. There's a specific emerald. I think it's a Brazilian emerald. So we are going to the back here. Now, you got to the, the back here the last time i didn't mm -hmm. did you yeah yeah we got there it, it was maybe we had maybe an hour total um so i didn't make it back in here because they were we were too excited about the christmas ornaments we were we spent too much time there we did but there is a lot to see i mean there mm -hmm. is some good stuff in here this salvage was nothing that you were looking for yeah yeah I'm surprised you didn't want the Brock's candy display, though. <laughs> it's fun. It would have been empty if I didn't have it here, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we go from the salvage. There was very little salvage, I will say that. And then we're back kind of in the decor items here. But again, you're getting more of like the primitive kind of stuff, which I know that there is a great market out there and there, a lot of people really do appreciate it, but I just don't have the knowledge base on it. It's a cute little footstool here. I liked it. It's kind of cheapy a little bit. It's very lightweight. I'm not overly in love with the fabric though either on it. Oh, what is yeah, it? These were great bookends. The teeth. Look at that. I know. Those are brilliant. I think they're bears or tigers. Oh, this is a keep. I love this color. This velvet book here. Oh, my goodness. It seems like it's some kind of prose or poetry. Mm -hmm. Look at the yeah, saturation. Colors in it. Oh, my yeah. goodness. You see the bleed through on it. I just, I love that green velvet cover though to it. It's got a little bit of a wear, but I don't mind it. I like things that kind of show their age and the character. So 
Definitely got that one. Ooh, here's the wall calendar you found. Mm -hmm. Another one with the letters. Mm -hmm. Really good condition. I was like, are they taking the pages out? <laughs> <laughs> they it's did a it. Thing. I got you yeah, right. They didn't mm -hmm. take the pages out of this one. It was in really good condition. So it has like daily sailing say oh my goodness. Sayings. Group. So great condition. We decided to go ahead and get this one though also. It's fun that it's a week at a time. Mm-hmm. Little cast iron dogs here. I can't remember. That's their going rate at $18 on those. Richard found some more ephemera here. This is a great unusual die cut here. The little cats having their tea party. So we definitely picked those up. Um, again, looking for the unusual ephemera. Um, this is almost the last. I think we have one more thing we're going to look at. And it's that Hershey's. Um, cookbook here it's all about the chocolate recipes but uh, just not really I don't know it's cool but I guess maybe because I'm from Pennsylvania <laughs> I'm like mm, it's all right <laughs> so we're taking it's it. fun to see all the old recipes it though and... all right guys we're gonna wrap it up outside well guys there you have it midwest memories here in tip city ohio i think we found some great stuff did we find some good stuff we found some good stuff we found some good stuff the let's go ahead and talk about it the music book <laughs> we found out that not only is it not for sale the reason it's not for sale is because the vendor is using it for arts and crafts so the book that's probably about 150 years old the pages as you guys saw are being torn out and other things are being done with it so i think it's a little disheartening simply because again how many of those are out there are there is that sheet music readily available anywhere else so those are things to consider the condition obviously is not the best um, and that's okay. I think that when we find things that are maybe a little bit more tattered, maybe a little torn up, for me, it really is about making sure that we do save that item so that it can continue to live on in some capacity. And I don't know, it's kind of sad to hear that it's, it's really on its last legs in its journey in life. So it is what it is. We found some good stuff. Check it out. All the contact information is down in the description of the video. Let me know what your favorite find of the day is or the item you wished I had most picked up. Either works and you know it, I'd appreciate it. And until next time, guys, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>